Thank you. Well, if it doesn't have a typo in it, then it probably was not produced by me. That's my map trap, <laughs> is to include at least one typo in everything I do. So digital elevation model hacks. I had submitted the talk as DEM brain hacks, which is more fun. And I just realized it was, it was brought to my attention that uh, the, the cooler among us read it in a different way. So I, I pronounced it DEM brain hacks. But Ross, how did you, how did you pronounce it? Dem brain hacks. Dem brain hacks. <laughs> I, wish I wish I meant it that way. I would have kept it. So uh, thanks for coming. And if you're watching online, the three or four of you who may have chosen to watch this presentation instead of Mike Foster's, um, don't switch now. Don't switch now. So thank you for joining us. Uh, OK, digital elevation model hacks, because digital ele elevation models are amazing things. And you can ply them and twist them and contort them into all sorts of unholy formations. And uh, we're all cartographers, so we appreciate that sort of thing. OK, so in all the examples I'm going to show you today, it's just using one data source, which is a digital elevation model. And I might make you know, five or six copies of it on top of each other with you know, nuanced transparencies and everything. But it's just a digital elevation model. And in some examples, it may have a satellite image underneath. So that's, that's that. Uh, no other information necessary for this. It's DEM brain hacks. So let's get rolling. So, Misty Mountains, right? Who hasn't looked at a, a photograph or seen this in real life and thought, this is just spectacular. I love this. You know, you've got this layer of ephemeral cloud material that you can kind of punch through and punch out of. Um, sometimes I've seen it from the air. I actually saw a tweet, which if I had time, I would show it to you, of, of a plane landing in New Zealand through this impenetrable cloud bank nestled low in the valleys of the New Zealand mountains, and they punched right through. And it's just amazing. Uh, and I thought, you know, cartographers can do weird stuff like this, right? It doesn't ha always have to be pseudo-realistic, and we don't always have to show as much information as possible. Sometimes there's a little bit of magic in hiding information and making it a little bit more sought after. Uh, <clears throat> here's a snapshot I saw recently of the Caucasus Mountains. Kind of draped in low-hanging cloud, this inversion is a really interesting phenomenon. Um, and to a cartographer, like I said, it's kind of ironic, but sometimes I like to cover up uh, information and make it kind of realistic. And if you were at my practical cartography day talk, you know that I like to make weird things um, kind of realistic looking out of data, which is totally fake. But ultimately, bits and bytes are all fake anyways, right? So, so let's have at it. Here is the beautiful area of uh, northern Italy. Um, <clears throat> this is my satellite base map that I'll be using in this next example. And here's the lovely, ghostly, ethereal, beautiful digital elevation model for that same area. The darker pixels represent lower uh, areas, and the pixels increase in brightness as they increase in elevation. A digital elevation model, just beautiful. All by itself, it's actually pretty great, right? It's a beautiful thing, and sometimes I'll just push different color ramps in here, and just my mind is blown by how beautiful the surface of our, of our planet is. Um, so let's take a look at this color ramp, speaking of color ramps. Uh, so you don't have to stick with black to white, right? That's just the delivery device and the default configuration for a renderer of a digital elevation model in most cases. But let's play with transparencies. So in the lower areas, instead of black, let's make them semi-transparent white with a slight blue tinge to replicate the bouncing around of, of uh, short wavelength light. And then as you go up in elevation, let's just feather that out into full transparency instead of just the standard white and see what it looks like. And it looks pretty cool, I think, right? So this is a totally faked cloud bank covering up the lower uh, valleys of, of these, these uh, beautiful Alps. You can see the tendrils of fog kind of wind up into the valleys of the, of the Alps. And it's just, I think it's a spectacular thing. Uh, also, it's totally fake, again, right? Everything's fake, but this is especially so. <laughs> Here's another shot of, uh, I think this is the Caucasus. And here they are draped in mist. 
fake mist, beautiful digital elevation model mist. Took about five seconds to make a digital elevation model look like mist. So give it a shot, I encourage you. Uh, here's an area some of you may recognize. Do you know where this is? All right, Seattle area. Um, but it's totally unrealistic because this is not draped in fog, right? So we can make this much more realistic by applying our digital elevation model hack and then generating a much more true to life representation of the Olympic Peninsula. So here's a lovely area. I believe this is a stretch of the Andes. And here it is, draped in mist. And it's kind of interesting, because you see these areas that you didn't necessarily know were low or high. You just saw some texture in the image before. But now you can actually see a sense of elevation as the mountaintops pop out of the low-hanging mist areas. Pretty cool. Uh, but you don't have to uh, feel like you're stuck with this realistic inversion scenario. Uh, water also yields to gravity a lot more than water vapor does. So let's try it with, with uh, a water construct. So depth and opacity. What are the things that I notice when I look at a clear ocean, right? I see, uh, I see a bright, fully transparent cyan at the top, and it migrates down into a, a deeper purple, a lower, a lower uh, brightness and higher opacity. It's the same hack, right? So we can do the same thing. Oh, by the way, that table, I think it's like a $40,000 table that somebody just poured this kind of slightly tinted resin onto, and I want it badly. <laughs> So here's a digital elevation model, actually, of uh, bathymetry in, uh, in the, the, the Caribbean, the Caribbean. I don't know how you want to pronounce it. It's, it's up for grabs. In the Cuba area. <clears throat> so let's take a look at a hillshade option. And we'll just run a quick hillshade on this to replicate a false light source in the northwest, which is where human beings tend to like their hanging artificial light bulbs for some reason. Uh, I've given it a color scheme a little bit like, you know, wet mud or butter. Uh, it looks like this. And let's drop in another copy of this digital elevation model. But now, uh, instead of giving it uh, a hill shade algorithm and a realistic color, let's give it uh, uh, that color range that I talked about with deep blue and a fully transparent cyan. And we'll drag our a color stop onto where I approximated land to be, right? Now we've got something that actually looks kind of like realistic water, right? You know, you've got this effect of uh, loss of, of detail and texture at depth, but you get a sense for some, some hill shade in the shallow area, shallower areas, which is what happens in real life instead of just a, an abrupt shift in a, you know, this blanket of an ocean. Uh, it's kind of fun to show some of the texture behind the scenes. By the way, you may have noticed a little bit of a perturbed surface ripple effect on top of this water. That's just uh, another hack. So I have a, a polygon fill. I actually grabbed a polygon from Natural Earth, the, uh, the, uh, the zero level of bathymetry for Natural Earth, and dropped it on here with a very slight uh, picture fill, which if you visit my blog, Adventures in Mapping, you can find that picture fill and steal it and use it and go nuts with it. So here's a zoomed out look at our fake ocean using just a digital elevation model rendered twice, once as a hillshade, once as a, as a blue to transparent elevation model. But there's no reason that I had to put my color stop uh, in a place that replicates reality, right? So we're cartographers. Like I said, everything is fake. So let's, uh, uh, let's, let's pull the plug on the ocean and drain it a little bit just by dragging the color stop a little bit to the left and revealing a little bit more land than we would have otherwise. So now we're getting this kind of what if scenario uh, from our data, same data. <clears throat> Here's Europe kind of draining the pond. Uh, England is now once more joined with Europe, right? <laughs> uh, but what's more realistic, uh, the fact that our oceans are draining or the fa effect that our oceans may rise, right? So there's no reason that we have to drag the, the handle one way as opposed to the other. So here's a, a, a beautiful area in the southwestern United States. You can actually see a little bit of uh, the Grand Canyon, I believe, somewhere. And here we are with a digital elevation model kind of filling up this area of the southwestern United States. And we've got just a subtle bit of satellite imagery visible behind our hillshade and, 
And on top of that is another digital elevation model uh, with our color ramp. Here's another area, the Himalayas. Here it is, flooded. <laughs> so um, I like to make impractical maps, but I also like to make practical maps once in a while. Sometimes I'll accidentally make a practical map. And I call this technique bumpified imagery. So you've got a satellite image, and it's kind of hard to tell what's a valley and what's a peak, right? That old problem. And so if I take a digital elevation model of this beautiful, beautiful area of the gorge, Pacific Northwest, I love it there. My sister lives in Hood River, which is just an amazing place. Uh, and I apply a hill shade algorithm to it. It looks like this. And then I drop in, uh, okay, well, so here's the problem. Sometimes you take this and you say, I'm just gonna cut it in half or maybe give it a 80% uh, transparency and bring it in over my satellite imagery. And you get all these gray tones that model up my satellite imagery and I lose crispness. Well, there's no reason that you have to stick with uh, a linear uniform uh, semi-transparency for this. You can, you can push down all those mid-tones of gray that we don't care about. And in the shadowed areas, give it a little bit of a, a short wavelength my scatter of a, a blue to purple. And then in the direct sunlit areas, you've got a, a yellowish or a greenish vibrant tint. And then you drop that on top of your map, and it's now been bumpified, right? So here's the original. And here it is, bumpified. Original, bumpified, original, bumpified. I need like a record scratch effect for this, right? You know those mountains that divide Europe and Asia? And now they're actual mountains dividing Europe and Asia without much loss in the underlying satellite imagery resolution or detail. Okay. Ethiopian area there, Gulf of Oman. So that's the rift valley, but now it actually looks like a rift, a rifted valley, right? Before and after. So here are the beautiful settling ponds in southern Israel. Uh, but look at what amazing topography is around there that we wouldn't have known if we were just looking at this, and we would kind of mask the detail if we just lopped on a uh, hillshade with a straight semi-transparency. Uh, so that's how to make uh, your areas look kind of realistically bumpy, but uh, let's talk about how to make your areas look fake bumpy, right? So fake plaster maps. You've all been to a museum and you've seen those kind of shiny plaster or thermoform maps that are so popular. Uh, let's, let's, let's check out uh, a battlefield, Civil War battlefield. This is Gettysburg area. Here's a hill shade of the Gettysburg area. And I'm only keeping the shadow from the Gettysburg area. Okay, this is interesting. Now I bring in that digital elevation model again, do an aspect algorithm, determining the angle of the light source, and I retain only the north, west, to upper areas of light using this color scheme. And it looks like that. Now you've got this garish overhead lighting on a accidentally shiny uh, sculpted surface of your map. And we'll a add uh, a little, you know, radial gradient around this as I want to do. And you get something that looks clearly fake, but it's not, it's real. <laughs> so what if we could use these powers for evil instead of good, <laughs> right? There's, there's no reason you have to choose these color schemes which represent fog and water. They can also represent something uh, like lava or hill shade with lava coming into it. Ah, all right. <clears throat> so here's an area. This is actually New Zealand. Uh, a series of movies were filmed in New Zealand uh, some number of years ago. I forget the name. I don't remember what they were. Uh, anyways, they had some dark moments with uh, f quite a bit of fire and darkness. Uh, and a simple digital elevation model trick can pull that right in. So here we are flying above the sky. And Alan Carroll sent me an email and said, hey, you do weird stuff with elevation models. Uh, can you replicate a sunrise? And I said, I can give it a shot, right? I'm, you know, yes, sir. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, so what do I see when I look at this? Well, I see the direct rays of the sun are kind of reddish because the long wavelengths punch through the mist of our atmosphere. And you get this my scattering in the shaded areas. It's interesting. And they tend to be purple and blue. And we don't want anything uh, in the elevation model in between those things. So let's, let's take a crack at it in this really interesting topographic area of the world. 
So we're going to bring in an elevation model and apply this color scheme to it, which looks like this. And that's OK, but it's a little garish and a little bit clumsy. Uh, and when I look down in a canyon, right, you get less incidental light, and so there's a natural darkening. So I'll bring in another elevation model and keep only my shaded areas. And then I'll bring in yet another elevation model. And using what we learned with the mist, we apply a little bit of mist inside those shaded areas to give it depth and reality and something that looks a little bit tangible. So there it is after, and there it is before, using only a digital elevation model. A single digital elevation model used many times. So uh, here we are in Canada. And I, does anybody know the name of this amazing crater? I think it's in Quebec. Yeah, I can't pronounce it, but I trust you. So here's what it looks like from the sky, and here's what it looks like from the sky early in the morning peering down from your plane window on your way home. Here's this beautiful river cut in the southeastern United States plowing through those mountainous folds, but it's kind of hard to tell what's going on, but this topography is really fascinating, and it's especially so when it's viewed uh, early in the morning via a fake digital elevation model sunrise hack. <laughs> Fantasy maps. Uh, I'm going to blow right through these, right? So fantasy maps, here's a digital elevation model. Uh, and there's no reason that you can't use this thing called a vector field, which actual cartographers use for weather maps and wind direction, stuff like that. Um, but you can hijack that symbology and apply it to a digital elevation model. Wait a second, this, this kind of looks like trees, right? Like a little Mario map. Uh, so let's spread it out a little bit and let's apply some hand-drawn symbology. And we've got something that looks a little bit like maybe you could see in a Tolkien book, but I don't know. Um, I'm using Dylan Moriarty's Moriarty hand back in the distance. Project line work is a beautiful resource. Here it is with another style of mountains, uh, kind of in the style of the uh, Shepherd Winnie the Pooh map, right? And I went out into my yard and I took pictures of my sidewalk and a bush and the grass and I applied those inside little rounded areas. And you've got this digital elevation model hack of the United States based on the textures that I snapped in my yard via the <coughs> vector field symbology, right? So go to town. Uh, use tools for uh, things that they were not intended for. <laughs>